Well, let me just do one quick blast pass, then we'll get started since it's three after the hour. Oh, Doug, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Excellent, thank you. All right, why don't we go ahead and get started? We have a fairly full agenda today. Let's see, action items. I don't think there's anything too exciting there to nag anybody on. Oh, other than Austin, were you gonna set up another SDK call or we're we gonna play that by ear? I could not remember what you decided. Uh, we are gonna set up another one because we have to work through some versioning issues. Um, the only thing I'm kind of waiting on is I think our, our team is actually gonna submit a first pass at the JavaScript SDK shortly here. And I just wanna see what learnings we get as a result of that before jumping on the next call. Okay. So I think we'll be in a more informed position. So hopefully we'll have that done in about a week and, uh, and then we'll set up the next SDK call. And again, anyone who wants to contribute to the Cloud Events SDKs, uh, there's a design document and Doug has, um, Doug has created uh, repositories on the Cloud Events GitHub org uh, to which you could submit PRs. Yeah, actually, since you kind of jumped into the SDK discussion, let's do that right now. Um, I did create the GitHub uh, repositories, as you said, except for the Golang one. That's actually going to get transferred over from VMware, and they're still working on the, the legal process, or whatever you want to call it, to get it transferred over. Um, however, I have yet been given the GitHub IDs of people who want to be made maintainers or admins, whatever you want to call it, on those repos. So I still need people to send me a note or ping me through Slack telling me who they want added as admins, because right now no one can do anything with PRs except for me or the admin. Or the other admins of the group. So I just need some GitHub IDs if you guys want to send those to me. Okay. I've got a couple coming your way right now, Doug. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, just to finish that out, is there any other things you want to say or questions for Austin on the SDK work? Okay. So let's jump back to the normal timeline then of the agenda. Um, community time. Uh, is there anybody on the call who's not a regular participant from the broader community who would like to bring up an issue for discussion? All right, not hearing any, whoops, sorry, wrong screen, scrolled. All right, uh, Kathy, is there anything you'd like to bring up relative to the workflow subgroup? Uh, no, not really. Nope, okay, thank you much. All right, next, uh, the interop demo. So I did send out a note to people talking about uh, the results of our uh, meeting that we had last week, talk about ideas around the next interop event. Um, there is a document out there linked in the agenda right here. Um, Right now, we seem to be heading towards some uh, two different uh, possible uh, applications. One involves uh, human language translation. So, uh, for example, an English sentence might get passed through a whole bunch of different nodes, um, and each one translates to a different language. Then, by the time it comes full circle, it's translated back to English, and we get to see how our systems butchered it as it went from one language to another. The other option is to do sort of a Mad Libs kind of a thing where there's a sentence with gaps in it where, you, where we say, okay, a verb goes here, a noun goes here, an adjective goes here, and then each node that's participating in the demo fills in part of the sentence and we get to see you know, what kind of funny sentence it produces. In order to do either one of those, we kind of need to know a couple of things. Um, I, I, I should also mention, we talked about potentially also leveraging different transports between the various nodes, uh, just to sort of show some interoperability around that as well. But in order to, to decide which way to go on these things, I think the biggest decision point here is actually things like, what are the transports can people actually support in time for say KubeCon Seattle? Uh, which uh, companies can support things like in English translation or just uh, uh, language translation, those kind of things. Because obviously, if we only have one company that can do one particular transport, you're not going to get much of an interoperability statement there, right? So what I really need from you guys is to fill out in this doc these two questions. What transports can you support in time? And do you support language translation? Those will help us decide what the demo is going to look like. So please, when you get a chance, let us know what your company can actually support. And that will help us make a better decision. Because you want to make it as inclusive as possible. Um, so, for example, if no one except for three people support language translation, we may not go that path, right? We may have to do a Mad Libs kind of a thing, which I think is something that everybody probably could support relatively easily. It's just randomly picking a, a word from a list. But anyway, think about that. Please fill in with your company's abilities. Um, and the time frame we're looking at is probably KubeCon Seattle. So that's November, December, well, I can't remember exactly when, later in the year. 
Any questions about that or comments? Okay. Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, a quick question, Doug. Mm -hmm. uh, can we submit, we could probably still go submit our own individual talks um, to KubeCon, right? And if, because uh, our, our company has serverless framework version two coming out, of which cloud events is kind of a, a premier concept. And we've got some really cool interoperability stuff to show off, but I think it's best if we probably just go submit our own, uh, our own talk for that. Um, is this, uh, well, I guess that's just standard process, right? We can go submit separate talks for this too. Oh yeah, I, I'm going, yes. My only hesitation there is I believe the deadline for submitting talks is beyond us. Ah, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I was just like looking at the website and at least that looks kind of done. No, yeah. the, agenda were, the agenda were decided last week, so yeah. Yeah. So do we have a reserve slot? So we will have an intro and a deep dive session, yeah. So if, for example, well, so let's take example the, gosh, where was it? The, the Europe one, I can't remember what city we were in, where you did that demo, uh, Austin. If, if someone wants to do that interop demo as part of a talk that they had accepted, I think that's great. If that does not happen, then we can leverage our intro and or deep dive sessions to show the interop demo. So we do have a, we do have a backup plan if it doesn't fit as, as part of someone's normal presentation that they want to share with the rest of the group. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right. Um, next is okay. Shanghai. So um, I'm trying to remember. No, I don't think we had a phone call yet. We do have one, I believe, right after this phone call today, uh, to talk about, in essence, this list of topics that people put down um, for potential. Uh, discussion points at the intro and face-to-face -face for our work group or uh, yeah, I guess work group uh, in, in Shanghai. Um, if you're interested in participating in this discussion, um, it will be, I think, on this Zoom call right after this one. Um, you feel free to join even if you're, even if you're not going to be there, but we're going to be talking about what topics to discuss, uh, who's going to volunteer for talking about each topic, you know, to do the presentation. We only have 35 minutes per, in, per session, meaning 35 for the intro, 35 for the deep dive. So we don't have a whole lot of time, but we're going to be talking about uh, that on the call right after this one. Um, so if you have any, if you want to participate, please join. Uh, other than that, any questions or comments about this? Okay, just want to make you guys aware of what's going on there in case you want to participate. Uh, next, let's see if we can get through some easy PRs first before we jump into some really deep ones. So on last week's call, Kathy had a PR with a relatively minor change, but based upon a, either a miscommunication or I just misread it or something like that, I thought that there may have been a possibility that other people may have misinterpreted Kathy's intent because the subject of her PR actually didn't say a whole lot other than she was just trying to make a change. And so I think other people may have done what I did and misinterpreted where she was going with it. So she and I did a little bit of talking and we came back with some slight changes. Um, and I wanted to make sure you guys are okay with it since this is a change to the governance stock and that's kind of a touchy subject sometimes. And I didn't want to, to approve anything without you guys getting another chance to see it. Um, so there were two changes that Kathy and I talked about. First was to add the phrase in aggregate to make it, try to make it clear that when we take attendance, it's either the primary or alternate person can be there for three out of the four meetings. It, so it's, if, if either one of them is there, for example, today, then that company gets credited for being there. It, um, that's the first one. The second one was, uh, Kathy wanted to make sure that she could basically change who the primary and alternate people are. Um, but we want to make sure that we don't necessarily uh, encourage game playing by having, for example, some company have a different person every single week just to get their voting rights. That feels, not quite ethical. Uh, so we decided, okay, fine, you can change it, obviously, because people move in and out, or maybe they're on vacation for a while. Um, but we wanted to limit it to um, no more than once per month making those kind of changes. And to be honest, uh, our history has been these things rarely change at all. So once a month seemed to be, you know, something that was a nice middle ground position there. I have a question. I don't understand the point of view that it's gaming the system to change every week. Like if you really want to go to the work of finding a new person to attend every week, is that really 
bad? So the, this, so this is kind of my personal experience in other organizations like this, where I have seen companies do exactly that. They get people to show up for no reason other than to get onto the agenda, or I'm sorry, to get on the attendee list so they can have voting rights just in case a vote comes up. But other than that, they pretty much do not participate in the working group at all. And I granted this doesn't stop any of that because you could still play some games. But I, I wanted to make it clear that if someone comes up to me and says every single week, hey, Doug, we want to change our alternate in a primary. And every single week this happens. I felt like I needed some way to push back and say, guys, something weird is going on here. This isn't, this isn't the intent of what we're trying to do here of, of, of having you guys change out a different person every single week. Because it doesn't make it look like you're interested. And I needed some way to sort of push back on that kind of behavior. That's all I was looking for. Okay. And like I said, uh, this hasn't been an issue because the list rarely changes. And most of you guys are, are uh, I think, fairly active and, and doing the right thing. So I don't, I don't think it's an issue. This is just a safety valve for me. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. Any, oh, I'm sorry, Kathy, I, I, should, <laughs> I, I, did you want to say more about this, Kathy? I apologize. I sort of dominated that one. Uh, no, I'm fine. I, I okay. think the the whole point of, you know, um, sometimes need to change it because the primary or alternate you know, business trip together, so. Yeah, okay. All right, didn't hear any questions. Little, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Doug, yeah, it's a little pedantic, but the, the verb done there seems a little off, like maybe and can be changed by notifying or changes are, changes are done by notifying. Can be, okay. Um, yeah. So I think can can be changed would be fine. Okay, hold on a minute. So you want done can be changed. I assume everybody's okay with that minor wording change, right? Okay. Like it says yeah. It says can be done. It can be can be changed. Okay, I can make that change. That's easy enough. All right. Any other questions or comments on this one? All right. Any objection then to adopting it with the slight wording tweak that Jesse proposed? All right, thank you guys very much. Um, okay, this one was raised by me. Basically, I was going through our roadmap just trying to see where we were, and I realized that there was nothing on our actual roadmap doc that gave somebody new to the group an indication of how far we, along we are in the roadmap. So pretty much I just wanted to add something that said, oh, by the way, these two are completed, and here's the dates that I think we completed them. This one was easy because we actually have a formal release for it. This date was a little bit fuzzier for me, so I kind of guessed based upon when we added the license stock and I thought we kind of completed them. I don't think the dates on this setup matter too much, but I just wanted to get in the pattern of actually saying we actually completed these things going forward. So someone looking at our group can see where we are on our timeline. Hopefully this isn't controversial. Any questions or comments on this? Any objection to adopting? All right, thank you guys. Next one. This one, it was in response to issue 268, where I can't remember the gentleman who raised it, um, but he basically wanted a slightly different layout for the list of specs or list of documents we have. But I think in the, before this PR, this was just a flat list in a table form, but it was a flat list. And it, he didn't really think it was clear uh, which specs were sort of required or core versus optional. And so that's what I try to do here. I try to make it clear that there's a core spec, which is the cloud event spec, and then you had a list of optional specs, which are the transports. And then we have additional documentation, things like the primer and extensions. And just basically trying, just trying to find a little bit of organization around that. Nothing semantic or nothing uh, normative change or at all. It's strictly syntactical. Any questions on this? Any concerns with heading this direction? All right, any objection to approving then? Looks Excellent. good. All right, thank you guys very much. Those were relatively easy. All right, um, hmm. so we, I was actually trying to go through our backlog of issues, trying to see where we were, um, trying to basically just clean them up. And I identified five different issues that I was hoping we could go through relatively quickly to close out. Um, if we end up starting to deep dive on one of these, I'd like to defer that discussion for a later time and we can just skip that issue. But I'm hoping that some of these we can just close off really, really quickly. 
Um, hopefully most of you guys have looked at this because I did send out a note about it and I haven't seen any comments on these issues that saying that they would think they should be kept open. So the first one is, you know, what open vending is not or what is, you know, what cloud events is not now. Um, we now have a non-goals section in our primer and I thought that was a good enough first step. Obviously people can add additional PRs later to enhance that, but I thought that was good enough to feel like we've actually addressed this issue as a, as a starting point. Anybody have a different opinion on that one? Okay, is there then any objection to closing this issue, saying it's been resolved? Okay, thank you guys. Oh, sorry, let me do it this way. Close with no action. Okay, thank you. Uh, correlation ID. Um, actually, this one and the next one go hand in hand. There's correlation ID and then there's causation ID. These are, in my opinion, go hand in hand because they're both talking about adding additional properties related to, well, obviously, correlation type stuff. Um, based upon our previous discussions, I feel like we've pretty much decided that we're not going to add any formal properties to our spec, at least not at this time, and that people will, <clears throat> through extensions, add their own correlation type of properties uh, to, the, to, their, to their message flows. And so as a result, I felt like we could probably close these two issues as, um, as you know, we're gonna resolve it through extensions. Any questions or comments on that? Any objection to closing with no action then on these two? You guys are going on, you guys are being too friendly today. This is great, thank you. <laughs> All right, log level attribute. <clears throat> so this one actually should be really easy. There was issue 63, which actually was the PR for this issue. And that one was basically trying to add a log level attribute. And we decided to, doo -doo -doo, to close this in favor of the tracing extension, which I believe Thomas added for us. So all I wanted to do now was just to close this issue that was related to the PR. This should be a no-brainer, but I didn't want to overstep my boundaries in case someone thought I was missing something. Do we want to reference into the other PR from that one? Uh, that would be good. Okay, I can do that. Um, whoops. To it just leaves people down the right path. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, to issue. Okay, I can do that. Thank you. Uh, if I do that, is there then any objection to closing this with no action? Okay, thank you guys. And Austin, you opened up an issue a long time ago to improve our logo, which I believe is done. So I just wanted to verify with you or anybody else that we could close the issue that was associated with our logo improvements. For now, I, I think we, we have something. And uh, unless someone wants to propose a new logo, we, we, could certainly, we could certainly close this. All right, any objection then to closing this one? All right, and as a side note, I actually did get the stickers. So I will be bringing those to KubeCon Shanghai and Seattle. And actually, for those of you who might actually be in Switzerland next week for the CS Summit, I will try to remember to bring some there. If you, if you find me, I'll, I'll hand out some of those to you guys. So that's all good news. All right, now to some more interesting issues. Um, open messaging PR, you guys have been awfully silent on this, and I have no idea how to interpret the silence. So let me just open this up for what, for what are you guys thinking on this one? Um, so uh, I, just po I just pasted uh, a, uh, a blame link for the open message specification for a particular line, uh, which literally lifts text from our spec. Um, which kind of suggests to me that um, the open messaging spec is uh, kind of feeding off some of the work that we're doing. Um, this, this is before, if you recognize, this is before my any change that I just did, uh, that we accepted, I think, last week. But this is the literally same text. Um, and uh, which already says that there's a bunch of overlap between what we do and uh, um, uh, what open messaging tries to achieve and if open messaging wants to be a similar type of abstraction for messaging as what we do for eventing, then that's fine. But then um, that kind of excludes 
precludes that we um, have some integration. And, and if things are at the same level of, of abstraction and it appears that they are, um, then a mapping makes very little sense. Okay, so it sounds like in summary, you're against adopting this um, mainly, for mainly for technical reasons as opposed to it doesn't meet the bar type of thing. Yeah, I, I, think, I think from a technical perspective, and first of all, the, this, the, the, the mapping that we have is, I'm not sure what it says really, um, because it seems to be mapping to this, to this abstract model. And so it's a, it's a mapping between an abstract model and an abstract model. And that seems very strange to me. Um, and there's very little you can really do with that spec. And, and again, if this wants to do messaging, that's fine, but I don't think there's a, there's a, there's a way to make those things match. Okay. Anybody else have any comments? What do people think about Clemens' point of view? Do they agree or disagree? Or do you guys disagree or, or agree with it? You guys can't be so quiet. Come on. <laughs> Don't be so intimidated. <laughs> <laughs> we need some input here. Because like I said last time around, I, I feel bad that this guy's PR has been out there for so long. Um, granted, we went, you know, we had to define that bar and stuff, but we, we really need to give him some feedback about how we feel about this. Yeah, I, this is Hein. Sorry, I was so quiet because I was on mute. I uh, totally agree with uh, Clemens on this issue. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to join in? Yeah, for what it's worth, so do I. I mean, I haven't really done a lot of looking into this, but that um, it's a fairly compelling point, so <laughs> kind of makes it moot. Okay. Anybody disagree with Clemens' point of view then? Okay, so what I think I'm hearing then is we want to reject this pull request, right? Yes. Okay. Clemens, can you do me a favor? Since you articulated your concerns very well and people seem to like the way you phrase it, could you add a comment? to the PR I'll, and then once, once you do that? I'll do that right away. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so let me just make it a little more official. Is there any objection then to closing his pull request with no action? Um, and Clemens will have the comment explaining why. Sorry to, to say this, but can you yeah. just repeat why we want to close this? I'm sorry, I zoned out for a minute. I, I guess my I guess my point here is if we if you close this one, I would you also close one related to JMS, for instance, if I uh, wanted to standardize the mapping to that API? Yes, because okay. JMS is an API. JMS is an API standard. It's not. It's not a wire standard. True, true. Okay. So by doing that, you're saying that you would have to create mappings, I know, potentially for every single um, messaging platform, for instance, directly one-to-one. -one. Well, you would have to, you would have to go in and if you look at the bar that we have um, uh, in terms of, of what we find acceptable or not, um, the, I, for instance, IBM doesn't even know how to, how to document their own MQ protocols. Um, so, sorry, Doug. Um, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank but, you for picking on me, though. I appreciate it. Well, sorry, but that's just that's just the example that was the closest, um, and so it's very difficult to define to define a specification uh, um, that anybody could go and implement uh, for wire compatibility, um, and but you can go in and use uh, uh, AMQP, right? Um, or you can use even the AMQP 0 0.1 0 0.9 draft if you wanted to, because that's a wire specification. But anything that's that's proprietary. I mean, if you go to JMS, then you, know, you can potentially map to a Java API, but the state of JMS is not such that it's actually reliably compatible with all products. Um, yeah. So I find I would, yeah, I think, I think we, should, we should really be principled about wire compatibility and not trying to go and, and uh, um, you know, create that compatibility with some, with some API where we need to have, be lucky that the drivers actually do what, what what you're expecting them to do 
um, and basically constrain it to a particular language, etc. Okay, so so I get that, and I I, I understand your concerns. I, I guess is there, do we have room in this group to support people that want to do, for instance, a JMS binding? Would that would that just be something that's out there and referenced, but wouldn't be uh, governed or or sort of formally supported? I guess. Yeah, I, th I think that's that's always. Um, that's always possible. And I think that's what we had this extension catalog where we were effectively referring out to other places. Um, that's where, that's where would, that would probably live. I mean, everybody can for their own product can say, cloud events look in our product as uh, like this. All right. Yeah, yeah, okay. But, but the, core, the core point I think in the, inside of this group is to create interoperability across uh, languages and runtimes and uh, uh, and the wire, um, and I'm not sure how much you know a JMS mapping. Given given where we are today, right? If you if you had raised this ten years ago or five years ago, I would would have been leaning more towards agreeing with you, or sorry, or to say, um, uh, you know, JMS is something that we should support. But we're now so far down the road with with MQP that it becomes a moot point. Yeah, no, that's cool. So, I mean, if we're drawing a line in the sand and saying, okay, we would equally reject those other sort of mappings, then, then you know, I, I'm with you. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I, I would, um, one clear way to say that is to say that it's not really a transport binding that you're trying to make. It's a mapping to another yes. uh, event or another messaging format. So that that's, it's named transport binding. What you're trying to create is not a transport binding, and as such, it doesn't meet the bar. Yeah, yeah, right. I'd agree. All right, thank you guys for that. That was a good discussion. It helped me get some clarity. Um, anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, then one more time. Any, any disagreement then with closing this with no action, with Clemens taking the AI to explain why we're closing it? All right, thank you guys. All right, property casing, Clemens. Let's open up your PR here so you could talk to that one. Give me a sec. All right, what would you like for me to display on this one, Clemens? Um, yeah, this, this section. Okay. Um, and then I made, made some made some changes down downstairs to uh, the uh, the properties. Um, so instead of getting into into case sensitivity or case insensitivity, um, uh, which is complicated because ultimately we're mapping to and we're using multiple protocols where we can change their stance on case sensitivity sensitivity or insensitivity. sensitivity, um, and we've had now the the heroic. Uh, uh, attempt uh, in the PR that I'm referencing, I forgot the number, of trying to rescue uh, effectively the casing through um, uh, HTTP by introducing dashes. Um, I'm going, effectively in this PR, I'm going the other way. I'm saying you can only use lowercase. And which means if, and restricting the character set effectively, which means no matter whether case, case sensitive or case insensitive is allowed or not allowed, um, you can only use lowercase and therefore uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and even if someone do, does, case, and it seems like there is, there's case folding being done um, by some frameworks, which then go and try to be smart about it and make it, you know, mixed case um, or make it, um, or fold um, uh, uppercase down. Um, I'm just saying the only way to, to, to deal with those pro dark properties is for them to be lowercase. If you see them in any other casing, do some framework um, dealt with them, you have to go and case fold them, and that makes it easy. And then I, if you scroll down, I renamed them, and it's not so terrible. Yeah, let's scroll I mean, example. even so if, you, if you look at the, so even if you're, if you're, um, um, leaning towards extreme programming language aesthetics, um, I think that's acceptable. 
I think if it's short, it works. If it's long, then yeah, I think the 20 character limit helps. Uh, yeah, so I also made a rule, if you go if you scroll up again. Um, yeah, there it is. I also made a rule that says, yeah, you know, you should be, you should be greedy. <laughs> um, and you should not exceed 20 characters in length. Reason for that is simply that if we're sending uh, Jason, uh, you know, canonical Jason across the wire, and we're sending um, hundreds of thousands or millions of them, um, that gets very long very, very quickly. So being a little um, mindful of the wire footprint that you're causing just for that metadata um, is a good thing. And so I made this a should rule. Um, but that's something that um, I think is a reasonable uh, limit. Um, and um, if you have something that runs very long, then it might be a good opportunity to think about how you can make that shorter. And if you really need to be over 20 characters, then you can. But for the core spec, um, it's hard to see how you would. Any other questions or comments for Clemens? All right, I got one for you, Clemens. So I noticed that you, you didn't address the issue of maps. What was your thinking on that one? I didn't address the issue of what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Well, are, are property types that are maps uh, going to be encoded with dashes or something else? Uh, or are they gonna be encoded as a JSON object, as, as a value? Or, you didn't, you didn't address that part of the issue at all. I'm wondering whether that's something that we should resolve separately from this or should that be incorporated uh, yeah. into this? So, so that's, that's in the HTTP mapping. Right. Um, and in the, so what I wrote in the, what I wrote in the, uh, um, in the PR, uh, in the comments, is that I didn't touch all of it. So uh, uh, at, the, at the bottom. There we go, yeah. You modified the core spec for the purpose of the initial discussion. Um, so basically, there's a there's a one there's a there's a, a a march once through the the rest of the specs to go and, and and adjust that. I didn't want to do this all in one giant PR where we don't know what we're talking about. Okay. Um, but 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 to address your question, I think these um, the model with the dashes for HTTP will will still be the case. Um, that doesn't go away because. You, you just map them into the transport and then yes, you lift things again off the transport into an abstract programming model. What you need is you need to have a notion of like, so the, for instance, the CE dash prefix in for HTTP headers will stay um, because the reason for that existing is that you can go and, and have an abstract programming model which only deals with our properties. You can go and project it into HTTP and none of those will clash. And on the other side, if you're collecting up your properties, you know that everything that is prefixed with CE dash will have to go back into that into that property into that property bag, your representation of the cloud event um, that you're then presenting up to the program model. Right. So all of that, so so that mapping stays. So this is only this is only saying we're getting we're we're breaking out of the jail of case sensitive versus case insensitive by just allowing lower case. Okay, thank you. Now there was one comment in here, this one. I wanted to uh, just make sure, yeah. I want to get your take on this comment. Um, so this is Nick. I, I personally think this comment is um, irrelevant. The, the two issues that are brought up uh, down here, um, the, the second one's kind of the easiest one. Once they're upgraded, Right, the, they're still all lowercase on the wire. It doesn't matter that we've gone from an extension into the uh, kind of the main spec because on the wire they're all still just lowercase. In the SDK, if we're you know we know about that new property in the new version, you know it's the SDK's job of getting that lowercase name and presenting it in whatever um, appropriate case for the language is. Correct. Uh, and then for the extensions, again, I don't think it, it necessarily matters because the in all the SDK models, you are just going to be comparing everything against the lowercase version of the you know if if yeah. your whatever map representation you allow people to put in the the camel cased or or uh, snake cased whatever names, it's then your job to convert that back to the yeah. simple lowercase and we're we're done. It I think in in my opinion this comment um, 
isn't an issue. If we were, if we were here defining uh, a compact binary format instead of, of JSON, um, all of our attribute names would be turning into numbers. Um, and then we would surface those numbers using those names in the SDK, but they would never turn into those names on the wire. Um, so they would turn into those numbers. So that's the same, that's the same concept here, right? We, we're, making, we're making expressions, identifiers that work on the wire and that you, if you are working close to the wire, you can go and interact with them easily. You can identify them easy, easy, easily, but how they surface up in the SDK will not be a concern. Um, and if you look at very many different APIs and how they represent wire concepts, um, they use their most, you know, the idiomatic representation in their respective languages and runtimes and not necessarily how um, the wire, what the wire representation looks like. So I agree. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments for Clemens on this PR? Keeping in mind, this is just the initial pass of the PR. He mentioned that uh, additional changes would need to be made, <clears throat> but the, the biggest point here is to get a sense from the group in terms of whether they like this direction of just lower casing everything. And to refresh everybody's memory, this is gonna be compared against Christoph's PR, which we talked about last week, which is, um, I believe, the Mitsuya alphanumeric and a dash before all capital letters. So we're gonna to have to choose between those coming up soon. But in the meantime, any other questions or comments for Clemens? I, 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 have, I, I actually have a question. I think um, Clement, hold on. Just let, let me. Think. I think that was Jim who's asking a question oh, first. Let me let, let him go first. Yeah, sorry, I forgot my hand up protocol. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't necessarily disagree with this, but I, I, um, and I could buy into it. I think there are a couple of other issues floating around or, around this whole subject area, uh, and I actually opened one uh, earlier in the week, uh, which is somewhat related to this, but not directly. Um, so given the amount of churn there's going to be when this stuff gets implemented in a, a, an all-encompassing PR, is it worth looking at those other issues and then rounding them all into one PR? Uh, that would be my only comment. I'm um, assuming you're talking about this issue that you raised, right, Jim? So that was one of them. That I, yeah, that was one I raised off the back the, of a comment that somebody made last week. I think it was, I may be misquoting, I think it was Tim from AWS. Yeah, I think you might be right. Yeah, I'm, I like, I like, I actually like the, the, the dropping the event piece since we're in control of the, um, the outer envelope largely. But, but um, that can be dealt with as sort of a tangential issue, right? Yes. I, th I don't think we need to go and roll this on, on top of this. Um, I think we can make that a, as a subsequent change. Yeah, I, and I think that's my point. Yeah, I mean, it's not reliant, but it's, um, it's related. Um, yeah. It's more to do for me with consistency anyway. Yeah, I would definitely agree it's related, but I think we could do, deal with them separately, unless someone on the call believes otherwise. Okay, so Clemens, you, you wanted to make a statement before we looked at the next thing. Um, yeah, I have a question, uh, and it, uh, I, that also plays into uh, probably into the next one that's that's up there. Um, I have been thinking about uh, separators, um, and I think I'm even con discussing that here. Um, like, can we allow a dot or a dash or or an underscore? Um, and I found um, that that's problematic in all kinds of different lang languages and runtimes um, if, you, uh, if you convert those names into identifiers. Um, one particular question I have is uh, for, for all the Scala fluent people, because I'm not, um, what impact underscores have in Scala? Uh, to my knowledge, and it's been a while since I've done Scala, it, it shouldn't matter. Uh, yes, this is uh, Vladimir. Uh, I can confirm in Scala does not matter. You can have underscores. Now you also have a one uh, quite interesting property, and that is if you have something that looks like identifier surrounded with backticks, uh, that can actually contain even spaces and and uh, other strange things. So there is a great flexibility of mapping names from various protocols and standards to something that works as a Scala identifier. 
Yeah, because the only language where I found, uh, and that was not deep research, where I was a little worried about underscores was Scala, because Scala apparently has this um, uh, pa pattern matching um, with uh, that is driven by underscores. And um, I wonder, I just wondered how much for practitioners that may be confusing if you are using the, the, the underscore um, across the language and then also have identifiers that are using, that would be using the underscore. Yes, when you have <clears throat> uh, isolated underscore that uh, acts as the pattern matching mechanism and substitute for anything or any. Yeah. Uh, but if the underscore is part of the identifier, it behaves like a completely ordinary character. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, so. Thank, thank you for, for educating me. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, guys. Any other questions or comments on this? So I'm going to uh, reply to the PR. I agree about the other comments about my comment on Tapi Tapani, um, except about the response stating that the SDK surfacing um, so to say, uh, new properties that have been promoted from extension wouldn't be a problem because that means the extensions and the core properties will either have to be in a different API in the SDK or the name will change in the SDK because it will suddenly, um, when you upgrade the SDK version, it will recognize that core property name and apply word separation, whereas it didn't before. and those, if we can promote extensions in minor versions, that means in the SDK, it will either be a break, breaking version or they will have different um, APIs for grabbing those yeah. extensions. So if I were, if I were, um, um, so for a, a C sharp API, I can, I can imagine, which would be using Pascal casing. I think only well-known things in the current version would be exposed in a strongly typed way. And you would have a, an extension bucket that you have to go and reach into to go and get at the, which effectively gives you the wire objects, uh, the, remi the remaining wire objects, and that you have, would have to go and interact with. Um, and um, uh, if you then, if we then go and promote in the next version, you know, the now, the, the new property, then that would show up as a as a Pascal case strongly typed property. I don't think it breaks anything. Sure, it doesn't break, but that again, that means there's different APIs. You can't make one singular API for accessing data in a dynamic language, which doesn't need static typing. Um, you can't not, do it. You can't do it in in an idiomatic way. That's true. Yeah, because yeah it's it's not necessarily a problem. I just want to bring up that this will limit the SDK design. I, I agree. I think these are good, good, good things to remember as the SDK developers start, you know, playing with their stuff. Um, just, you know, see how painful it is for people. This is all. This will all be good feedback. All right. What I'd like to do now is uh, Joshua. I don't think Joshua's on the call, but Joshua opened up an issue. I think it was last night, uh, suggesting that maybe we should consider a snake casing instead. Uh, is there somebody who would like to discuss this issue or talk in favor or against? I'll give you guys a second to read this in case you haven't had a chance to read it yet. All right, any comments on this one? No one wants to speak up? Does anybody think this is a good way to go as opposed to say Clemens lower casing or Christoph's using dashes? Uh, I, I think this could have upsides. I want to say that camel case <laughs> it's not a downside that camel case is the standard for JSON. It's not really a standard for JSON. It's just used, but so is snake case in a, in so many APIs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, it just seems like another option here where like, I, I sort of feel like what Clemens was saying about, you know, sort of the specification versus, you know, 
on the wire versus what we bubble up in SDKs. It's it, the whole thing is starting to just feel like six and one half a dozen the other to me. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, I just felt like saying that out loud. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm starting to get a similar feeling to be perfectly honest with you, but yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Have I, any I, thought, Go ahead. I, I was of the understanding that um, we couldn't use uppercase because of some of the, the, the transport requirements meant everything would be lowercase or something like that. So I think that's what led us down that path. Yeah. Is, is there, does snake case start with uh, uppercase characters? No. Not no, it doesn't have to. You just put a delimiter in the middle. It's oh, just, so that's just the underscore. Yeah. The, just the underscore. Just it's funny that everything has a name now. <laughs> funny how they yeah, go. There's a new one on me, but I learned something today, which is great. <laughs> I may guess snake case is better than underscore delimited, but you know. <laughs> or C plus plus case. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so is the uppercase an issue, which means we have to rule out camel case and then it becomes between snake case and just lower case. Is that yeah. what we're talking about? As I said, I was looking for I was looking for the separator here on Go ahead. No 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 but go ahead. Go well, ahead I mean I'm I'm intrigued by his argument of the uh, of communicating a little bit more about the field um, with this with the underline that previously came with the case. Um, I don't know if that's enough to convince me, but I'm intrigued by it, and I haven't thought it all through the transport binding, so I'll defer to Clemens on that topic. Yeah, I'm, I, as soon as as soon as anything comes that that isn't alphanumeric. Um, there is various transports and protocols and codings that have various opinions about what what is what. So I'm I'm always a bit worried about. Um, so dashes are a problem for language bindings, and dots are a problem for language bindings, and the underscore is really the only thing that is that that works. And then you have um, you know underscore being a non-permissible characters in other APIs. Um, and that's why, that's how I landed in there. I don't know how languages, so I, I don't have a complete overview of all the languages that are being used. And that's why I asked that, that question about Scala. Um, so, so underscore seems to be a choice that's okay. And that's why I was looking for it. Um, and so I'm not opposed to it. It's just I'm I'm this the, not allowing it is kind of abundance of caution because I don't know how far our thing is going to go. What if we preferred short, like less? Your recommendation for less than twenty characters, and avoiding the use of underscore, um, is also a recommendation. So if there are companies that want to go beyond twenty and use underscores, they can, but it goes against the guidelines. So it's still permissible in some cases, but we don't recommend it. Yeah, we, yeah, we can, we can, we can make a should not sh should not rule, and allow it. But that would that would really be the only that is the only separator um, yeah. that I would um, permit. And then I would um, probably try to avoid f try hard that we avoid it in our own specs. Yeah, I, I would I would say that it should not with an underscore kind of defeats the point, I think then it would be better to just not allow it. Because if, 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 there's, if there's concern about the transports, then the should not doesn't actually guarantee anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's always the problem with optional things. Yep. Okay, so we're running a little low on time here. Um, so it seems to me that we have three different options in front of us. We have the ones Clemens talked about, we have the snake case one, and we have Christoph's. Um, I think people probably need some time to go back, digest this, think about it with their respective teams. What I'd like to do is perhaps on next week's phone call, see if we can come to a resolution if possible. Um, if not, we have, need to have more discussions, we will obviously, but um, what I'd like to encourage people to do is to uh, add comments to respective issues or pull requests so we get some conversations going there. 
just out of curiosity, um, if it's okay with you guys, I'd like to get a general sense of, of, of where you guys are leaning towards right now, just for the guys on the call right now. So just out of curiosity, um, are there people on the call right now who would prefer, say, Joshua's snake case solution? Yes, I would prefer snake case. This is Roberto from Adobe. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah, I, I would prefer snake case over all lowercase too. Yeah, I, is, I'd like to at least understand it completely um, because it is preferable, but only if it doesn't break transports. Okay. Yeah, this is Vladimir. I agree. Uh, if it does not break transports, I would prefer the uh, snake case because of much easier uh, readability. And I'm concerned about, uh, for example, the aspects of uh, tracing, particularly distributed tracing, where we are tracking events that are going through a number of systems. It would be much easier for the uh, human reader to, to correlate and see what is going on. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in on that one? Okay. Is there anybody on the call who would prefer Clemens lowercase everything? I would. Rachel, okay. Yeah, I would as well. Yeah. Okay. I also prefer the lower casing. Okay, thank you. Anybody else want to chime in? Yeah, I, I would as well. Okay. Jess. Do you want to do this in chat? Well, no, this isn't a formal vote or anything. I just want to get a sense. It sounds like there's definitely some people who want the first one. Some people want Clemens, and it sounds like it's about even right now. Uh, what about Christoph's? One where he uses dashes between words. Uh, I'm sorry, a dash before every uppercase letter. No. <laughs> like, That's... like one thing. Can I push for this? Like, yeah. Instead of just saying I prefer this one, which is like one, like we could settle it that way. But it would, like, I would prefer if we like tried to summarize the implications of each, and then, and then I, I imagine that there will be that a winner will like a clear answer will emerge i like this might be this might be optimism but i think that the um the implications of snake case will outweigh the pros but i might be wrong and so i would i would really appreciate it if we could like try to summarize why people like if people on each side could try to summarize why like what they see as the overwhelming case like in very concrete terms i would find that easier to like be open-minded to yep i, I definitely agree I can suggest what I would observe. Uh, kebab case, like the dashes, are going to mean that you can't use them as bare, work, like bare access in languages like JavaScript, where you can take a map and either access it with indexes or with a period. Uh, snake case has a nice benefit of making human, like multi-word things more readable, but the downside is it makes uh, mm -hmm. multi-word things much more likely. And more expensive, because there we go. I, yeah. I, would, I would like to I would like to say that the um, the alphanumeric attribute names HTTP that's a transport um, that's a transport thing, and the others touch the main spec, so they're not directly comparable. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't think about that. So, so I would so if I I'm gonna I'm gonna edit make my edits. Um, I would say, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do a PR on top of my PR. Basically, I'm gonna do a, a fork once I'm done. And I'm going to add the camel case. I'm going to add effectively the underscore to the permissible characters, and then we can go in and because that in the end then is the the, the snake case, right? Yeah. So I can go in and effectively expand mine to include the underscore, and then we, um, as as all um, uh, um, arguments have been exchanged for or against, we can then go and basically just vote to have it or not have it. Yeah. That sounds great. Yep. And, and thank you, Rich, for sticking up. But I, yeah, I was going to say that after I got a, a sense of who was in favor of what, because I want to make sure that there were some people um, who actually did want each one of those. So yes, please put comments into each of the PRs or the issue in uh, Joshua's case so we can get some conversations going there. In particular, uh, list the things that you think are uh, ad advantageous or problematic with each one so people can, can see your point of view. All right, and we'll see what we can do about uh, trying to resolve that next week. I'm not sure. Okay, I don't think we have time to dive into your next PR, Clemens. So let me just quickly go back and, oh, cool. People have been adding their names there. That is wonderful. All right. Um, Eslam, are you there? 
Eslam? Oh, yeah, they dropped off. Okay. Um, Chad, are you still there? I'm here. Excellent. Uh, Simon? Yes, sir. Okay. Vladimir, I heard already. Klaus, are you there? I can't remember if you spoke or not. Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Okay. Oh, what about Victor? Victor, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Excellent. I'm here. Yes, I can. All right. And what about the Renato? He's here. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Simon, are you there? Actually, I think I heard Simon already once. David you Lyle? Have you have me up top of the list. Oh, cool. Thank you. Uh, David Lyle? Yes, David. Excellent. Dan Barker, I know you're there because you pinged me. Uh, Chad, I got Nick. I heard you. All right. Is there anybody I missed? I may have some duplicates on the list, but I'll fix that later. Oh, uh, actually, I did one, that one person. Where are they? Eslam. Okay. Hey, anybody I missed on the attendee list? Hi, I'm oh. here, Erica. Erica. Excellent. Yeah, please. Yes. Excellent. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Thank you guys very much. And for those of you um, who want to talk about the Shanghai meeting, you can probably just stay on the call and we'll just uh, roll over into that one. But everybody else, thank you very much for joining. We'll talk next week. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Okay. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. See you. Thanks. Thank you. See you. Bye. Really? 13 people want to stay on the call. I'm surprised. Oh, there we go. We're losing some. <laughs> All right. So let's see. Me, Clemens, Kathy. Jim, you going to stick around? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Oh, here are these things. Oh, okay. We're losing more people now. Uh, William. All right, we are down to eight people. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, let's do this. Do, 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 do. Where is it? There we go. All right, so when you guys look at this list of potential topics, are there other things you'd like to add to the list? Keeping in mind, we only have two 35 minute sessions, so we have to keep it fairly brief. Nothing? Okay, I guess that's a good sign. Yeah. So um, let's just quickly walk through these in terms of priorities, the things that people think we definitely need to have there. Um, from least, my point of, go is ahead. There, so is there a Oh, sorry, I misread. I was reading serverless's workflow. No, we have workflow down here. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, I don't know how, how that happened, but I just had that in. Yes, maybe it's late. Sorry. Okay. But so I think it's a given we have to provide at least a cloud events overview at some point. At some point in that discussion, um, do you guys think we need to review how we got here? Meaning overview of the serverless work group at all, or does that? history and we don't need to dwell on that anymore. It's good for an intro if you if you just want to say something about it. Okay, so maybe say five minutes or so, right? I would not even spend as much on it, but Okay. Yeah. Okay. Less than five I minutes. I think just yeah. a very short introduction is good. Uh, five okay. minutes maybe a little bit more. Maybe just one or two minutes. Okay. We can do that one or two minutes. Okay. Um, skipping this one for a sec. So status of cloud events, I'm assuming this is probably going to be related to cloud event overview. So those will probably get lumped together in some fashion. Yes. Um, workflow. I know Kathy, you probably want that. So that's, a, that's an easy one for you. Anybody else have any objections to including that as one of our futuristic topics? Yeah. Okay, it seems like an obvious thing. I'm sorry, go ahead. Varun, you're you're breaking up really badly. I can't hear you. Unless it's just me. No, it's not. It's just you. 
Rune, are you able to switch rock with the Alan again? Okay, we'll see what you can do. Clemens, I'm sorry, Kathy, you were going to say something? Yeah, I, I think for workflow, I'm just going also to uh, for a brief introduction, you know, not really uh, deep dive into it. Um, so how much time, do you, time is limited. Uh, how much time do you think you need on that one? Um, so how many total time? 45 have, minutes? We have 35 minutes for each session. Oh, okay. So total is 70 minutes, right? So yeah. maybe uh, I can there yeah, ten or fifteen minutes. Oops. It's not an easy topic to really. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see how it plays out because I think I think we may have to uh, twiddle the times a little. But let's start out with ten to fifteen minutes and see how sure. it goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um. Okay. So what about demo? I'm thinking this may not be the best forum for it. I'm not sure we necessarily have time to do it, but I want to get your guys' take on it. Um, to to build to build a, a new demo for it. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have enough time for that to really make it. I think we say we're going to do this in Seattle, right? Seattle conference, right? I would definitely want to push for it for Seattle. Yes. Yeah. Um, we can like we rush. can go and recycle. We can recycle the 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 prior demo. That is true. We oh, could yeah. recycle. That's good. I, have, right. I mean, I have all the bits. I, I'm, I'm, I wonder whether I still have some of them deployed. Even um, so, I can, I can certainly make, I can certainly make the uh, the existing demo work again. Um, and and Doug, you have an endpoint. Mm -hmm. You have um, not thrown away that code. Nope. In fact, um, so we can, we, I, don't, I don't think we need to go and get everybody's endpoints back up, but um, we can. Uh, um, Soap you know about SOAP Hub, don't you? No. So actually, yeah, so anyway, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, there's, um, I actually, I had a, an intern basically create a version of, uh, of uh, nice. Twitter. Yeah, so this is, the, so my endpoint's still up and running. And I, I, I can add anybody's endpoint they want to this. And yeah, we could do a demo of that. Yeah, perfect, that. great, fantastic. We'll so do let's, that. Let's see if we have time. Um, <clears throat> we'll add it to the list and we just, we'll see if we have time for that one. Because um, the, the yeah. code is the same, so it's yeah. all. That's the nice thing about interrupt. It ought to be just working with the stuff that I have, right? Right. So let me do this. Let me move the workflow here. So what's next for serverless? Aside from workflow, do we have enough topics to potentially mention to make this a, a discussion point? Have we reached a consensus of uh, what's next for serverless work group? No, in fact, I think no, this right. one. So I'm not sure whether it's good to. Yeah, if we included uh, this one, I kind of thought it would be more like here are some potential things we thought about, but that may be too much of a tease. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I'm not hearing any great love of that one, so we can cross that one off right now. What about this one, cloud event persistence? What's that? What yeah. does that mean? What is 276? Let's see. Take a look at that one. I think this is a very specific topic, I feel, you know, it's not in the same level as the other topic. This is a very specific that topic. I, I don't feel we, we should include the very, very specific, because if we include this, there are many other um, topic about cloud events, right? Yeah. Clemens, you, you disagree with that assessment? No. Okay. So I think that makes sense, Kathy. Cross that one off. So, so how many? So, so we, how many talks do we have? Two. We have a deep dive. I'm sorry. We have an intro and a deep dive, both 35 minutes. This feels like we're light on topics, to be honest. Um, well, it well, depends on how much yeah. how much we want to pad out the the demo piece. Well, well, not only that, but I guess we do have to allow for time for questions and answer. So that's yeah. five to ten minutes there. Yeah, we definitely need that, you know, so we can get some input from broader, you know, yeah. audience. Yeah. So five, ten, oops, fifty, five, ten minutes. Okay. Um, I think the demo probably could be very low priority because we already have that demo, and most people, I guess, already seen that. Okay, so let me just move things around a little based but, upon. But you should don't underestimate the 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 
the depth in which we can go just on the existing specs. Because we have transport specs, we have MQP, MQT, MQTT, and, and HTTP. Um, we have a we have the the webhook spec that is something that's that's general generally useful. Um, there's a, I mean, I can turn this into a 90, 90 minute session if I want. To. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure you could. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. So um, don't, don't be don't be too worried about us not having content. That is okay. is easy to fill. So okay, that so that's interesting. So it seems to me in an intro session, if we have you know one or two minutes of what was or what the serverless working group did and how it led to cloud events, and then we do some amount of overview and status in an intro, that might be a nice introductory session. Yeah. And then a, in a deep dive, talk about some of the uh, deeper level things, like the, some more deeper dive in, on the transports, for example, get into the workflow. Uh, don't know where to put the possible demo, whether that's an intro or deep dive, but maybe classify things that way. I, I, would, I would do the demo at the end of the intro session. Okay. But without, without, I would talk about the demo as a scenario uh, in that session and then basically make the cliffhanger of, um, oh, and if you're interested in how that works, you got to come to the next session. Okay, so hold on a minute. So intro. Um, I would like to add that um, in the intro, we also like, you know, so in the deep dive, we also have some cloud event session, right? So we need to add that, not just workflow, but also uh, well, cloud no, event. I was going to do this. I was going to do cloud events. Yeah. And also in the intro, I think we also need some um, uh, overview of the workflow too. Otherwise, it's a little bit weird. Why, you know, in deep dive, we mention workflow, but in intro, we do not mention. I think we should also, same thing. We should talk a little bit about, you know, workflow, introduction about workflow. So maybe do a little bit of a tease there to, to bring people back for the deep dive. Yeah. yeah. Like that. That we also kind of at least mention the SDK. Oh, right? SDK. Hey, I'm glad we can hear you now. Yes, SDK. That is yeah, excellent. Right. So do you think SDK would go into intro or deep dive? That would be part of deep dive too. Um, SDK. Okay. I think both, you know, a, a brief intro of the SDK and then to see whether anyone would like to do. Um, I'm not sure, is there anyone doing deep dive for SDK? Because Austin is not going, right? Yeah, Austin's not going. I, I can definitely talk to that in terms of what they've been doing because I've been attending those meetings. Um, okay. I don't think that's a big deal. But I do like the idea of a little bit of a one to two minute tease of workflow and SDK to bring people back and then talk about them in the deep dive. Yeah. Um, and I think the real question here is what from this list of the cloud events overview do we want to pull down into the deep dive? Because I don't think we necessarily have time to talk about all these in that session. Um, um, yeah, especially like transport specs and all, I think can go in the deeper dive. Okay, let's do that. Yeah. I, I think for transport, if we really want to talk about it, it can take the whole session is not enough. So I think yeah, that need to be very brief. Maybe we just mentioned what kind of transport we support. Uh, and the why, that's probably enough. Okay. Anything else? What do you mean oh. by samples in the overview of the samples? Um, I'm trying to remember what I was thinking of. I, I think I wrote that. I think I was just trying to give, I think I just wanted to show people what cloud events look like. And I think that's probably, that's probably automatically there when you start talking about what are cloud events and the overview of the spec. I don't think we have to call that out. Okay. I think, I think we can remove that. Use cases and then, okay. So hold on a minute, let me do this. Let me grab you out of there, put you there. Put that there, so. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Okay. Uh, we, we don't have a birds of feather session, right? Last we have last time. We. Do not. We can. I, I. I. would like to actually turn these into birds of a feather. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no. Birds of a feather. That was. We turned that into more of a, of a work group meeting, right? Yeah, it kind of ended up like that. I think. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so I, no, we don't have one of those set up. We could definitely do one. I don't think we're gonna have enough people to do a real meeting. No, sorry, no, I, no I think we had a different work group meeting, but we had a bit of session, uh, feather session with like uh, people who are not in the work group, right? I think that's what we did at uh, Stockholm or whatever it was, Copenhagen. Did we? I can't remember. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so old. <laughs> uh, but that's fine. These are the two sessions we have over here, so well, that's fine. Yeah, uh, but yeah, um, but I would like the Q&A session at the end of each to be almost yeah. like a bird of a feather, so it's interactive. Yeah. Okay, anything yeah. else? I, I feel like the deep dive is still a little light. I know, Clemens, you, you, you said we could ramble for quite a while there, but uh, <laughs> are these two sufficient, you think, for deep dive? I, I, I think it's sufficient. Uh, so I, think, I, think, I think if we, if we, if we should only show the, de the demos, uh, the demo kind of from the surface and say this is the scenario and explain the scenario basically make the, make this this session a um, as we would call it level 200 um, the first the intro which is uh -huh. like take the light on tech and probably doesn't show much code then the deep dive if the deep dive starts with um, explaining that code that's already taking um, some time and then um, and then I would and then I would go into uh, you know transport, basically transport specifications and event formats, and how that all hangs together and why it's built that way. Um, and then we can go into workflow. I, that Thirty-five minutes already becomes tight when you when we do that. Yeah, you're yeah, right. I, I, I was very tight right. actually. Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe we we can assign time like this to over ten to 15, ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That these these. Mm. Yeah. Well, so we talk about SDK. Yeah, we, we do some, whoops. Yeah, five minutes. Right it's already very tight. So for yeah, so workflow, I want to say, I, I want to talk about some use case. So I, I would like to get some input use case. I think it's important. And then it's an overview of the, yeah, workflow um, model. That I think yeah. that's already easily take 10 minutes. Yeah, okay. use case and then workflow model. Yeah, okay, second so one. A workflow model, okay, that's fine. Yeah. Just the overview, yeah. Yep. Okay, so let's focus on the intro here for a sec. So we have some times here, which I think those work fairly nicely. Um, intro, timing, we have one to two minutes just for this. Um, so the tease is one to two minutes. So let's say we have 35, take away 10, that's 25, maybe five minutes between the first and last session. So that takes down to 20. So we have 10 minutes for here and 10 minutes for here. And that does not include the potential interop demo. I think for the status of cloud events, probably five minutes is enough because the status, right? Not, and then for the tease about workflow SDK, both, I think we'll probably need five minutes. That's easily you talk about several sentences, you know, what, what is, uh, yeah. What do you guys think? 20. Yeah, that's good. Comment, any comment on that? Um, what are we now? 10, 15, 20? Yeah, we don't have any time for the demo. That may be, we may have to play that one by ear. Unless you guys want to definitely al allocate some time for it. No, we don't have to. I, I think it is fine if we don't have that demo because we're going to have another one in Seattle. And then we already have one before. So we could do this. So time permitting. Yeah. But we can, we can announce, say we're going to have a demo in Seattle. We can say something like that. No, we no, the, what... but it doesn't help anybody who's in the room. Um, uh, the, the demo that we had is good enough. And, and if Doug has, has it, I would, I would literally just, just use that as the cliffhanger. Like it's a, it's a one minute, two minute, oh, look at what we have here. And, uh, you know, talk about the, the, the scenario per se, and then say, if you want to see it, if you want to see the detail, then come to the next session. So do we actually have that as a topic in the next session though? Cause I don't see yeah. it on our list. Yeah, that's, that's what I would, that's what I would do. I would, I would then go and, and talk about um, what, how the demo works. And I might do this um, actually after the, the deep, so I would probably do the deep dive and then go and explain the demo once we've done the deep dive. Like now you explain, so, so basically you start with, here's the HTTP mapping, 
um, here's the the, um, the the webhook spec. Um, here's the JSON things. I would probably focus on those and then mention NKP and, and MQTT. And then say, oh, and if you were here for the previous session, you remember this demo. And now let's go and take a look at what we just talked about in code. Okay, so what I think I'm hearing you say something more like this. So teasing on the workflow yes. SDK and demo with, with about five minutes or so on that. Okay. Yeah, so we're not going to do a demo. We're just going to talk about the demo, right? Is that, is that we're right? Gonna, we're just gonna show, we're just gonna show some, some web pages. We're not gonna, we're not gonna go in and show any code in that, in, in the first talk. Uh, what kind of web page are you going to show? What, what Doug just showed. That. So the integration scenario that we had is, is effectively, this is the, this is the non-Twitter Twitter version of this, <laughs> right? Yep. And so that's what we're going to show. And we're going to explain how this is coming. We're going to, in the intro session, we're going to, we're going to explain um, that there are various uh, uh, publishers that are raising events and they're being pushed and they compose this feat. And um, so we'll talk for a minute about that, but we're not going to talk about how that's being done. For that, people need to come to the next session. Yeah, we can, we can steal some of Austin's slides. Or I'm sorry, he has one slide in particular that shows yes. all the various players involved, and, and we could quickly talk about it. I don't think that Correct. takes very yeah, long. I think it's good. Yeah, I think it's good to show you know, all the players. Remember last time we, have, we showed so many companies involved. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's it's good to show like there's a lot of you know participation in this, uh, in this work group. Okay, so let's do this, Kathy. I assume that's an easy one. You want to talk about that <laughs> in the workflow? Yeah, <laughs> it's um, not easy one. I can talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are there other so, Varun or Clemens or I guess Kathy, are there other topics on here that you would like to own in terms of doing the presentation? Actually, Varun, are you going to be there in Shanghai? I'm not sure, plus I don't think I feel, uh, yeah, I don't think I know well enough into some of these topics to talk about them. So I think you guys probably have it covered. Okay, in that case, Kathy Clemens, um, are there other topics here you'd like to talk about? Mm, let me see. Take ownership of. Uh, so I would like, to, okay, um, I would, um, Take the transport specs. Transport well, so, okay. specs so, so, so keep in mind, um, I, given it's only 35 minutes or actually more like 25 minutes because you have to leave time for Q&A, yeah, I yeah. don't think we should have more than two speakers per session. Yes. So I would like to be in the deep dive. That's what I thought. Okay. So that's why I thought. Now, okay. So let's focus on the deep dive first. So Clemens, if you do the cloud event stuff, Kathy, you do workflow. Yeah. SDK, do either of you feel comfortable talking about that or would you like me to step in there? I, I have not even been in the group. Okay. Yeah, probably Doug, you, okay. you can talk. I can definitely do that, that's not a problem, okay. Uh, okay, let's focus on the intro then. You guys, are there any sessions in here that jump out at you as something you want to do? Um, I feel like I can talk about status of cloud events. If you like, or Doc, you can take that if you like. Uh, I'm just saying. I don't, first, first thing, I don't care. I can do any of these topics. <laughs> so I, I, want, <laughs> I want you guys to get first choice, basically. Okay, I can talk about that. That's just called events. Okay. Uh, I can, um, I can, so l let me, let me say what I'm going to volunteer, what I'm going to volunteer on, and then we can go and still, you know, probably separately talk about the, 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 who speaks about it. So I'm happy to go and turn the technical parts of the specs into slides. Mm -hmm. So I can do the overview, the slides for the overview um, in the sense of here's what the spec actually says. Um, and um, then we can still decide who's gonna, who's gonna talk about it. If you wanna talk about it, Doug, then you should. Well. Okay, so I, I, t I tend to think that the person who's going to be talking about it sort of owns the slides. Now, whether okay. they write it all themselves or they steal it from other people or get help, that's up to them to decide. So okay. I'm, right. I'm more mm -hmm. interested in right now, who wants to do the talking? 
Doug, do you want to do the talking? I don't care. I, I will. If, uh, yeah, I have no problem doing that because <laughs> I've done it before. So I, I don't mind doing that. Okay, great. I, and, Sorted. Uh, there we go. It's now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this, Kathy, obviously you could do a tease about the workflow. Yeah. Um, do you want to also talk to the demo or Clemens, would you like to talk about the demo? Um, I can talk about the demo. If you want to be there up there with three people, then I can talk about the demo. I'm trying to figure out whether it makes sense because you know, it's because it's your, it's actually the version that your intern did. Uh, it will make more sense for you to do that. So for, for you two to split that session. Okay. I can do that. Um, is that everything? So, I, so you are going to talk about this, uh, the workflow SDK demo, right, Doc? I will talk about, I will do the, the T's of the workflow SDK and the demo, yes. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, so this I can, feels, I can you know, help with a slide on a yeah. workflow. So this, mm -hmm. well, hmm. see, this feels a little awkward because, Kathy, you're only there for five minutes. Um, Hmm. Well, hey, what, what, if, what if we did this? What if we split it like this? Whoops. Will that work for you, Kathy? Okay. Just because I don't want you to get up there, only talk <laughs> for five minutes and then turn around and step back down. That's, that would feel a little awkward. Yeah, okay. So maybe that's five minutes and then two minutes. Actually, let's do, let's do this. Let's do four. I know we're not gonna be that precise, but just so we have a general sense of how long each one's supposed to be. Okay. Okay. And Clemens will do a deep dive on the demo. Okay. So, oops, let me get this out of the way so you guys can see the full screen. Hold on a sec. Okay. So does this, as of right now, look like a good flow to you guys? Yeah. Does maybe I want to have fifteen minutes for the deep for the transport specs and demo? Okay, I don't think that's a big problem. I think we'll probably have time. Okay, anything else? No. Okay, so tell you what, why don't we do this? Why don't we now um, stop here, and then we will go off and think about this in our, our particular sessions uh, and maybe we could talk again after next week's phone call, just like we did today to see if people have any concerns about the flow or questions or something like that and yeah. talk about the next steps. Does that sound good? That works. Yeah. Okay. So for, Actually, Doc, for the SDK, I might need your help, you know, because I did not join that, uh, this group meeting. Yep. Not a problem. Um, I'm just trying maybe to think. Scott. I th yeah. yeah. I just, yeah, that's fine. I don't, yeah, that's no problem. I was just thinking, um, I think Scott actually might be really busy with other things. So he may not be able to talk. Varun, you said you don't feel comfortable about that. That's fine. Nick, I haven't, I don't know if Nick wants to talk or not. Um, let's assume not. Cause I don't, I don't even think Nick has actually been in our phone calls. So he may not be a good person to do it anyway. And I don't know who Rue is. So that's okay. I just want to make sure that we didn't exclude somebody from the potential speaker list. So I think we're good. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's talk again after next week's phone call, assuming that works for you guys. I'll send out an invite and then we can see if we have any additional questions or, or suggestions for changes at that point. Does that sound good? Yeah. Sounds yep. good. So when would you like to, should we have some slides ready so we can go through them and then review together? Would you like to do that? Yeah. I'll tell you what, let me, let me do this before. We, otherwise I will forget. So some AIs. So, um, invite for next week's call. Same, same day and time. Oops. Um, uh, start a Google PowerPoint deck um, for people to add content to. Yeah. Uh, gotta do, whoops times two, got to do two of those. Anything else in terms of next steps? Um, in terms of action items? I think that's it. 
Okay. Tell you what, I'll, I, I don't mind taking the, I'll, I'll do these things. I don't mind doing that. That's not a big deal. Give me okay. something to do, make it feel productive. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about then? Uh, no, uh, since this is the first time I'm going to China for a uh, Linux Foundation conference, mm-hmm. um, do, do you use the invitation letter that they give on in their websites? Uh, actually, I already have a visa, uh, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, ah. I don't yeah. know. Oh, okay. uh, you oh, may yeah. Go ahead. Okay. No, no, that's fine. If you don't know, then that's fine. I'm probably going to go then through our corporate, um, our corporate mechanism. I, yeah. I, I was, I went to China last year, and I was stupid enough not to do a multi-year entry visa, and I'm going to ch- fix that now. I think. Yeah, I would uh, definitely recommend getting the ten-year visa. It makes life so much that's easier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> ten years. Ten years. Yes. Ten years. Yeah, that's right. Use ten years. I yeah. think the invitation letter will, 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 I mean, will do it. You can get that. Get the visa. I, I have the feel. I have the feeling that uh, I'm going to go to China more often now. So, mm-hmm. all right. All right. In that case, cool. Um, any last questions, comments, things to talk about? Uh, no. All right. I believe we're done then. Cool. Yeah, Thanks, guys. All right. All right. Talk to you next week. Yeah. Yeah, bye. Okay. Bye.